sir, and I will now request the last presentation to be given by Dr. Vaishal Kinya uh, on role of Corvus ST, a biomechanical assessment tool in modern refractive surgery. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes. Uh, yeah. Just put it on. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. One second. You have to just yeah. put it on the slide. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, it was very gratifying to hear uh, so many topics uh, on uh, corneal biomechanics and their views. And I thank uh, AIOS organization and uh, uh, Oculus and KLB for giving me this opportunity to talk on the role of Corvus ST, a biomechanical assessment tool in modern refractive surgery. Refractive surgery is done, refractive screening is done to separate abnormal corneas from normal ones. In doubtful Bellin Embrasio displays, integrated Corvus Pentacam helps as an adjunct to screen abnormal corneas. Corneas which is biomechanically strong is suitable for refractive surgeries. Cornea as is not a piece of plastic as uh, this phase was as said by Cynthia Roberts. Cornea is having both elastic and viscous properties. Elasticity describes the ability of a body to resume its normal shape after deformation. Viscosity describes the resistance against permanent deformation. And stiffness describes the force needed to elastically deform the body. Biomechanical changes precede topographical structural changes. And this is the very basis why the biomechanical tools have become more important in refractive surgery screening. We want to pick up the subclinical keratoconus and uh, picking up those cases would definitely uh, prevent iatrogenic ectasia. So assessment of corneal biomechanics in vivo is still evolving. And ORA was the first tool where the CH and the CRF sensitivity and specificity was found to be very low to differentiate keratoconus from normal corneas. The Corvus ST or the corneal visualization Schimpflung technology uses a real-time corneal deformation data to analyze the corneal biomechanics. It records the corneal reaction to a defined 30 milliseconds air puff. And this is a defined force which is used to deform the cornea, unlike the previous generation ORA. The ultra high speed Schimpflung camera uses 4,300 frames per second to record the deformation or the corneal dynamic response. The Corvus ST is primarily used basically for optimizing ectasia detection, detection for biomechanical analysis, pre and post LVC and cross-linking for glaucoma screening. And it gives a BIOP or the biomechanically corrected IOP. The Corvus ST essentially has the, the Vinshigira screening display, the integrated display and the comparative display. The Corvus biomechanical index is made up of five factors, parameters, and as Dr. Rohit pointed out, the embryo relational thickness is one of the factors which is a non-biomechanical parameter, but incorporation of that was found to be negating the bias for thickness. And that's why it was found to be much better than the ACBI index. They had compared the CBI as well as the ACBI index where the ACBI, the embryo relational thickness was removed. They found out the CBI index to be more sensitive and specific. So the CBI index is still holding good and the embryo relational thickness is still incorporated in. So Corvus biomechanical index is primarily used to differentiate normal corneas from keratoconus and it's based on corneal thickness profile and deformation parameters. It's got a sensitive specificity of 98.4 and a sensitivity of 100%. So deformation amplitude 
the softer corneas deform much quicker much more deeper and over a wider area than a stiffer cornea and this has been the basis for deformation amplitude ratio which is the ratio between the deformation occurring at the apex as well as 2 mm away from the apex so this ratio increases in softer corneas the integrated radius as the softer corneas deform more rapidly and over a wider area they form a very acute or a steep angle and the radius of curvature formed in and the area subtended within this uh, acute angle is far much more larger so in a softer cornea you will get the integrated radius much more higher this parameter was uh, first brought in by cynthia roberts and this is the most sensitive and specific individual parameters unlike the cbi which is a composite parameter the next individual parameter which is most sensitive and specific to differentiate between normal and a keratoconic cornea is spa1 and as the stiffness parameters suggest it is force upon displacement adjusted air pressure at the a1 or the applanation 1 is considered and the displacement occurring at a1 is considered as a ratio and the stiffness is uh, calculated now this stiffness as it decreases it's a softer cornea and as it increases it's a stiffer cornea ambrosio relational thickness this is the only thickness parameter a lower value indicates a thinner cornea and a faster thickness increase towards the periphery also in indicates a thinner cornea a special uh, index was derived for post laser vision correction so a cbi laser vision index was found and this was def developed to differentiate between normal keratoconus and post laser vision ectasia the importance of this was that serial uh, scannings were not required and one single uh, reading of a cbi lvc was uh, able to uh, tell us and uh, diagnose uh, post laser vision ectasia unlike before you wanted to see the patient uh, serially and then come to a diagnosis of uh, laser vision uh, correction ectasia or a post lasik ectasia so a cbi lvc gives us at one go you can uh, diagnose a post lasik ectasia so what is the relevance of cbi with the severity of keratoconus and myopia so uh, co and atal have uh, studied this and they have seen that the cbi uh, indices were proportionate to the severity of uh, keratoconus and we uh, studied the corvis biomechanical index with a degree of myopia mild moderate and severe myopia and we did not find any relevant any association with the spherical equivalent refraction so the biomechanical index did not change much with the amount of myopia which was very relevant because even in high myopic eyes if the corneal biomechanical index was poor or the corneal biomechanics is poor then to do a deeper ablation would have resulted in decompensated biomechanics and ectasia but as we rightly as we know that there is not much of a difference between mild moderate and severe myopia uh, uh, in terms of the corneal biomechanics tbi is a index which was uh, used to detect subclinical keratoconus uh, artificial intelligence of random forest was uh, used and it was found it was much better than the bad d or the cbi and this is an example of a form fruit keratoconus where the cbi values and the pentacam values were absolutely normal but on only the tbi is uh, deranged so as rightly discussed before tbi is more sensitive and more accurate and as prema madam said it is the least it is very weakly correlated with iop and thickness so this makes it more independent definitely the ssi index is far better than the tbi index so biomechanical comparative display the stress strain index now this is a stress strain index which gives the intrinsic material stiffness and as stiffness has two components the geometric that is the thickness of the material 
and the intrinsic material stiffness the ssi is that the stretching factor and gives a numerical value to the stiffness so now we can quantitate unlike the cbi or the tbi where we could not quantitate the difference between mild moderate or severe keratoconus here now we can distinguish between a mild moderate and a severe keratoconus depending on the ssi <laughs> and the normal value at 50 years is 1 so in uh, younger individuals are definitely the normal values will be uh, erring slightly on a lesser than 1 so i would just discuss a few cases about the relevance of biomechanics now this is a 23 year old male seeking refractive surgery having a topography pachymetry front elevation back elevation which is absolutely normal with a dp which is borderline deranged of 1.75 but the final d is almost 1.48 now <clears throat> here we saw the biomechanical integrated display which showed that the cbi was deranged the pentacam back d was normal the ssi was 0.86 but still we can say this is a softer cornea and the tbi was deranged the left eye of the same individual these are normal 44.3 and 44 not very steep cornea pachymetry of 513 the relative pachymetry showed 5.7% relative uh, that was the thinnest area in the inferior temporal quadrant front elevation and the back elevation was essentially normal and the final d was 1.63 and the dp was 1.71 again here the cbi was deranged tbi was deranged and the pentacam was normal the ssi again was still more than uh, it was 0.69 and uh, it was still uh, softer than the right eye so the pentacam values though were normal but the biomechanical indices helped us guiding us uh, to avoid any corneal refractive surgery in this case coming to the second case a um, 24 year old male seeking refractive surgery with no contributing history again the topography shows a normal topography with a pachymetry of 509 and epithelial map of 56 microns with no uh, thinning which is can be seen on the epithelial map the dp is 1.82 again borderline final d of 1.65 again here you see the cbi which is abnormal and the pentacam has a borderline final d has got a uh, borderline value the tbi here is normal it's almost near zero and the ssi is 0.69 the left eye again normal topography normal pachymetry the epithelial map again here is normal the front elevation the back elevation is normal and the final d is normal the cbi again is deranged around 0.52 and tbi is normal this is exactly what uh, rohit sir said sometimes the cbi is abnormal and the tbi is absolutely normal and here the ssi value is 0.88 here since that uh, uh, bad d and the cbi values were borderline but the tbi being more sensitive and more specific we relied more on that and patient was advised for both eyes surface ablation and down the line we have followed up with this patient and at the moment at one year he is stable now this is the third case where the topography you can see an asymmetric both eye uh pachymetry of a thin cornea of around 489 microns 53 microns in the epithelial map you cannot see any uh, thinned out island on the epithelial map front elevation the black elevation is essentially normal the d values are normal the final d values again here the cbi is deranged grossly the bad d is normal and the tbi values again borderline it's nearing 0.29 so here it is absolutely borderline tbi left eye again you see the epithelial map also showing no uh, thinned out areas on the epithelium map or uh, the front elevation map back elevation map is normal the dt is around 1.67 which is borderline 
the final d is 0.97 the cbi is absolutely deranged the tbi is borderline and the bad d is normal again here the ssi is 0.98 nearing 1 so we can say this is a almost a normal ssi so since the cbi was ab abnormal and the tbi was borderline the patient was kept under observation because i thought the tbi values were borderline so i have kept this patient under observation we are ser serially monitoring this patient for almost one and a half years the values have remained the same and this is a final case where we had topography pachymetry and the front elevation was absolutely normal but the back elevation showed a posterior elevation mind you the specular microscopy was normal the white to white was 11.4 so it was not a very small cornea also because in sometimes in a very small cornea you get a steep island on the posterior elevation the cbi the tbi was normal the left eye was absolutely normal and it was a thick cornea the cbi tbi and the bad score was normal the point here was that if just looking at the pentacam on the right posterior elevation because of the insight of the normal biomechanical parameters i took uh, i went ahead and did a femtolasic for this patient and 3 years down the line this patient is still normal so definitely in such uh, cases where there is a dilemma definitely a uh, corneal biomechanical met uh, metrisis definitely can be used as an adjunct to tomography in refractive surgery screening corvis st definitely provides an edge over conventional uh, screening for refractive surgery and this might help to make a better decision thank you so much